Welcome into ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. Coming up on today's show, how about this? We're about to tell Terry Fontenot exactly who he needs to keep on this roster who's going to be free agents this year. And they may have been in the Valley of the Sun in the middle of the desert, but guess what? They were making it rain. And last but not least, and for the culture, how about this? A league that I played in is coming back. It's ATL Day Ones. Let's go. This is ATL Day Ones. Part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. First of all, I want to say thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listen of the day. Remember, we are free and available wherever you download your podcast. And wherever you download your podcast, make sure. That you leave us a five-star review. Really appreciate that from you in advance. Today's episode of ATL Day One is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more and make sure you visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on today to get started. Now, T, when you think about all the conversations that have been had about Desmond Ritter and whether or not he's going to be uh, – competition going to be brought in or – they're going to draft a quarterback with that number eight overall pick, mm-hmm. which is actually ludicrous that people actually consider in that. I but know, anyway, uh, <laughs> I think that this one thing that Terry Fondo uh, emphasized when in the end of the year uh, press conference, he said that they have to take care of their guys in-house first. Now, we know mm-hmm. the situation with Chris Lindstrom. One year left, we know he's going to get paid. They're going to figure that bad boy out. But and Rightfully you know, so. <laughs> yes. Amen to that. And I think, But I think there are some guys, some veterans who – on this team, they're going to be free agents. They sign a one-year deals, mm-hmm. and I think when you think about these list of guys, mm-hmm. I'm gonna give I'm gonna list them all to you. So I want and I want to get your thoughts as to who you think they should bring back: Caleb mm-hmm. McGarry, yeah. Rashawn Evans, Lorenzo Carter, Parker Hess, and Michael Pruitt, mm-hmm. Isaiah Oliver, Bradley Pinion, and last but not least, Alameda Zacchaeus. Who would you um, prioritize out of that list, T? My top would be Rashawn Evans. I really, okay. really liked what we saw out of him. Oh, and and it, can I give a 1A and a 1B? Of course. Of course. Uh, Rashawn would be my 1A. Oh, sure. and <laughs> Isaiah would be my 1B. Because, and, and is anybody shocked that my 1A and 1B are defense? But anywho, mm-hmm. Rashawn Evans, I really, really liked what we saw. It was like Jarvis, as the season got better, more on, he got better. The longer we got through the season, the more and more I was impressed by what he was able to do. And I trust someone that Dean Pease brought from his days with the Titans that Arthur Smith co-signed on. I'm going to trust that what we saw can be built on taking away the Marcus Mariota decision. But I I think that the Rashawn Evans decision was actually a good decision for them to bring him over from the Titans. And again, Isaiah Oliver has really improved year over year and Mm -hmm. you never kind of know until free agency truly approaches or we're, we're getting a little bit closer because Honestly, we're still a month and a half out from free agency to really know where the viability might be for secondary, if you so choose to go out there. But he's kind of carved a niche for himself in that little nickel space. I kind of like it. So if he can continue to excel in his situational space and you can put him in there on specific downs and specific instances, I really, really like those two. And, you know, so that I don't completely take over uh, in terms of what, what it is that I would like to see. I think the the third person for me would probably be Olamide Zacchaeus because I think he has established himself as a solid third in the to to the likes of a Russell Gage because mm-hmm. remember, he started off seeing Russell on special teams and right. then just way into the receiver core and he was a pretty solid third option solid enough to get himself paid with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers so yeah. to me OZ is not far off of that. And I would say that's kind of my first tier of, yes, yes, let's bring those guys back. And then maybe my second, I'd probably put like a Parker Hesse, a Michael Pruitt in because those are actually blocking tight ends who can catch. And when we're talking about a run game that is as prolific as this run game has been, and I believe will continue to be coupled with the fact that they already have a tight end who feels like a receiver in Kyle Pitts. I feel like, hey, those are some good blocking tight ends that can happen to that happen to be able to receive or uh, pick up a ball pretty well. And then I think this is on you. I really want to see where you put Low Carter because I feel like depending on who you talk to, <laughs> Low could end up in keep him, keep him. I don't know or 
Hell no, let him go. Everybody else, Caleb McGeary, definitely the punter. Bradley Pinion, okay. I mean, I believe that somewhere in the draft or somewhere in free agency, you can still get yourself a good offensive lineman. Like, I, I really tr and truly believe that. Same with the punter. Same with the punter. <laughs> T, I think the, the most the, probably the interesting thing that I, it it took you all almost uh, several names before you got to the right tackle, right? The, the guy, Caleb McGarry, right? So, and, and I and I kind of and it's interesting because you know he had, he had a good year this year, but yeah, I, I think he's one of those guys that I will wait as long as possible because at yes. the end of the day. You don't want to overpay for those one year wonders. No, and for those you don't know. I do not like dudes that wait until the last year of their contract mm -hmm. to figure out how to be a professional. Yeah. And, and that's what Caleb McGarry did. That's why they didn't pick up his fifth year option. So, and right. just to be quite frank, you know, and mm -hmm. just kind of leave it like this. Mm -hmm. But, uh, however, I do believe that Isaiah Oliver is a guy that I wouldn't mind bringing back because yeah. at the end of the day, if you find somebody, uh, uh, you find somebody in the spot or you find a way to make a guy useful, uh, right, be, right. be on your roster, yeah. your roster like Dean Pease did, mm -hmm. and of course it's going to be up to Ryan Nielsen where whether or not he feel like that'll be a good fit going True. forward. Mm -hmm. However, I do believe that he is a guy that I wouldn't mind bringing back. Um, and also uh, Alameda mm -hmm. kids, I do, I yeah. do think he's going to be a guy that they do bring back because when you have when you find guys in that third wide receiver, third option role from a wide receiver standpoint, mm -hmm. and you find like you can give some solid pr production from that spot right. from a guy like that, mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. you don't let those guys walk because they're gonna, you can be fiscally responsible yes. when it comes to those type of guys. And Lord knows the Falcons are going to be looking for fiscally responsible players, even though they have a lot of money. They have mm -hmm. quite a bit of uh, cap space. Second yes. in the league behind the Chicago Bears. Yeah. They're still going to be responsible. And I think Terry Fondo is going to make sure he emphasizes that all the way through. Now, mm -hmm. T, your boy just got back from Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. And, uh, I've been, I've been, I've been rolling through the, I went through the prospects, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, two days of practices and just going through and talking to some cats down there, talking to some scouts and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I've come to the conclusion. I got, mm -hmm. I got the number eight overall pick too. I got it. I what got you got, it. JD? What you got? got <laughs> Woo. And with the number eight overall pick, the Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons, Falcons select. select. <clears throat> Here we go. Let me give a little sheet right here. Keon White. Yeah. In, out of Georgia. Yeah. Tech. Cosine. Cosine. Oh, my goodness. See, here, here's the thing. Like, when, like, this is the type <laughs> of guy that I really like. Now, we, we know how important pass rush is and all that yes. good stuff. Agreed. So the one thing that really from this cat is the fact that he is heavy handed. What I mean yes. with that, when he put his hands on offensive of linemen, <laughs> they move. And when you're talking about uh, a team being better against the run, the Falcons want that. And when yes. you're talking about somebody being able to put his hands on somebody and, mm -hmm. and, and shoulder shock those bad boys and put those those jumper cables on them and they move, that means he's easy to get off blocks. It's, it's yes. not he can engage and disengage when when at at that point in time. And I got a chance to talk to him. Mm -hmm. By the way, you guys can check that out on my podcast feed. I got a one on one with Keon White. Make sure you do that right on Locked mm -hmm. On Sports Atlanta. But uh, he talked about power being being his, his number one thing, and I, yeah. I love the fact that kids understand what their strengths are and they play placate to that and not try mm -hmm. to be something that they're not. I love the fact that I love that fact about him. But yeah, it's going down to Keon White. Let's go. I I, I absolutely love it, and I think it, he'll be a good pick pick up for the Atlanta Falcons. And of course, he's and, right in the backyard. Right. And not to take away too much from your mm -hmm. interview, because like you said, we do want people to go and check out the full, but there's a question that you often ask guys, and I want to at least get a sneak peek into, or give our, our audience a sneak peek into what his answer was. You often ask them in a third and situation, what's their go-to technique? What did Keon White say? I'm, I'm just curious to let them know what he said. <laughs> oh my goodness, T. Like, and he said that he's always tried to, you know, um, do the little whole speed rush thing. And like mm -hmm. Isaiah Land talked about how he's dipping yep. rip. That's just the whole thing, right? Finesse. Absolutely not with Keon White. He said power. 
power bull. Like he he's trying to he's trying to manhandle. He's trying to go placate to his strengths. That's why I say I, I like this kid. He got a good head on his shoulders, and mm -hmm. he's also been blessed by the pass rush whisper, Mr. Yes. Chuck Smith himself, who yes, we'll be sir. having on this show next. Cannot week. wait. So make sure you guys stay <laughs> on the lookout for that. So we'll have him on the show. But yeah, T, I, I think. The Falcons would be, I'd be very pleased if they uh they call this number. But you know, with my general imagine hat being on, mm -hmm. I already got my pick. So yeah. I like uh, it. Stew on that one for a while. How about this? Here it is. You know, coming up next, we're gonna talk about the Atlanta and the drubbing that they put on the Phoenix Suns. We'll talk about whether or not they can sustain that type of uh consistency, right? But first, we gotta talk about fan do because. They are now the new sports betting partner for us, mm -hmm. Locked On. And they're the number one sports book in America. So here's what we got. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. So for all you new customers, if you say, Jarvis, I never, I never messed with FanDuel before. That's great. Because here's <laughs> what they're going to have for you. As soon as you go to Locked On Sport, I mean, on Locked On, I mean, excuse me, FanDuel.com slash Locked On. If you go to the website, drop five a $5 bet. They're going to give you $150 in free bets. Because guess what? The Super Bowl is coming up. It's a little bit over a week away right yeah. now. So go to fanduel.com slash locked on and make sure you type in that bad boy and get that $150. All it costs is five bucks. You know, you'll be able to combine your bets for a chance at, at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. You don't know what a same game parlay is? Go to fanduel.com slash locked on and they'll make sure that you know everything you need to know in order to make some money so here's what we got five dollars hundred fifty dollars five dollars hundred fifty dollars win or lose at fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with fanduel official sportsbook partner of the nfl yeah speaking of making everything kind of work in your favor it was crazy last night like Guys, we're going to take you back to yesterday because we assume and we believe that you guys actually do check us out every single day, right? So we told you because Jarvis and I asked the question of whether or not we thought that the Hawks would actually win this game. Now, you know the answer was, yeah, they can because the Hawks can literally go out and beat any and every team, including a team in the Suns where really the Suns only had, I think the spread was like, you know, they were one and a half point favorites, right? Right. Mm -hmm. My God, I don't know if maybe the Hawks got the memo and thought that it said 11 and a half points that they should be, you know, ahead or 23 or 33 or even 43, which is the biggest lead they had last night, but they definitely understood the assignment, went out into the Valley of the Sun and got themselves an absolute dub of a dub, arguably the best dub of the year for them. So 132 to 100, obviously gets them back to 500, 26 and 26. But let me start right there, Jarvis. Mm -hmm. In your opinion for what you saw or heard, depending on whether you listened on radio like I did or you watched on TV, was that the best was that the most impressive win of the year for the Hawks? It has to be, from especially from a shooting standpoint. You're talking about 57% from three-point? Not, that's not the field goal percentage to you. Yes. We're talking about from the three-point line. That is absolutely ridiculous. 19 point, I mean, 19 three-pointers made. You mm -hmm. know, that's the high, a season high. So right. when I knew what time it was when and Trey <laughs> when Trey hit that dog on three and, and, and hit the, uh, a bank shot. Right. He didn't call it, by the way, so right. it don't count. But you know, it was it went towards the score, but it didn't count uh -huh. in real life. So, but right. but yeah, when you think about guys hitting shots like that, DeAndre Hunter, who's been mm -hmm. struggling out there shooting the rock, like and, yeah. and looking good. So all of those things just really just came into play, and I was just like, oh my goodness, this is this is what this line starting lineup was meant to be or meant yeah. to look like. This is what Travis Slank had in mind when mm -hmm. he put this team together. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see it out. But, you know, that's a whole other conversation for another day. But however, T, I think mm -hmm. one more thing that just really, just really, really stood out to me. And I think mm -hmm. this is the thing that they can that can, can sustain itself. Because I don't think that you can sustain shooting 57% from three-point line. Agreed. Is Trey, there was one specific play that I saw last night that I mm -hmm. thought that, hey, this is the type of Trey Young we need. It was he got he turned the ball over mm -hmm. and immediately went yes. back and the guy tried to make a pass. T the dude yep. stole the rock, got it back, yes. got it to John Collins and he hit it right there for the corner three. Yes, knocked it down. I was just like, 
That's it. That's the type of trade we need. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to be a lockdown defender. Mark Jackson even talked about on the broadcast as well. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to be a lockdown defender. We need you to be active. We need your hands to be active. We need you to get in the passing lanes and Mm -hmm. and steal the rock and and get an extra uh, possession. Those are the type of things that um, will win you games Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, especially when you come up against God against teams that are in the play going to the playoffs too. Right. Now I will give an honorable mention to this the Suns win, right? Because I know yeah. the numbers, when you look at the 132 to 100 in particular, that's probably what stands out to people. But I will say that I'll probably, even though the three point percentages weren't as high uh, when they beat the Bucks, but they did beat the Bucks twice this year already. They beat the Bucks on the Bucks court. They beat the Bucks on the Hawks court. So that's probably where I'm going to go only because that's your Eastern Conference elite. Yep. And you've beaten them twice already. And that's the thing that at a minimum we want to see. Like for you to get out of the playing round in the East, you need to at least be able to win some tiebreakers. And that helps you to win the tiebreaker. So yep. I would probably still defer to those being to me the, the best wins because you also did it within a two week stretch of time. You beat them at home and then you went to their court and beat them again. And regardless of whether they have Chris Middleton or not, it's not like you have Bogdan Bogdanovich. So you were missing a component or two yourself. And right. even last night, yeah, they were missing Devin Booker. But let's just face it, you'd also, you know, the Suns had won six of their last seven. So right. you were already in a mode where you were operating effectively without him. So I mm-hmm. still would say this is probably, you know me, I'll go 1A, 1B, and 1C so that mm-hmm. I can get the yes. Suns in there. Exactly. But I go back to some stats that you kind of want to piggyback on stats that you gave as far as why this would still be my 1C. And in addition to the very number that you called out as far as the three-pointers, I want to go back at the percentage as well as the number that's made. I want to go back to what they were able to do in stopping the team that makes they're the number three team in the league in three-pointers made. That's the Suns. Four of 28. Yeah, they could have had an off night, but when you only make four of 28 three-pointers, that's not just an off night for you. That is an on night for the defense from the opponent. So I do want to give the Hawks an incredible amount of credit for that. And Jarvis, they could have laid down, right, after that second quarter and said, hey, you know, we scored 40 in a quarter, 66 at the half. No, those guys came out, the starters came out and just went for blood. If we can see that kind of effort, or like you said, each starter being prepared to do something extra, you just hit the nail on the head. That was the extra play for uh, Trey. And that by far was my favorite play of the night too. Yes. Other than that, DeJounte Murray, don't good God. But oh, yeah. as far as, no because, right, <laughs> exactly. So for Trey, that was my favorite for, for him, right? Now for DeJounte, it was the dunk because that showed that authority. We keep telling people that dude is a quiet dog. That's the kind of thing you see from quiet dogs. And John Collins being prepared saying, okay, my guy made a mistake. He recovered. Now I'm going to be ready for wherever he gets it to me, whether he gets it to me inside the paint with an alley or whether he gets me out on the wing and I convert. Yes, yes, yes. Keep doing that. And we could just go on and on about everything that they did. That was so very positive. Also Jarvis, another uh, season high, that was a good look for the Hawks was the fact that they had 30 to assist because that oh, always yes. speaks to ball movement and yes. it speaks to, Hey, I may have a good shot, but if Jarvis has a better shot, I'm, I'm dishing out to my guy and I'm going to let him finish it off. So really kind of liked what I saw there as well. Now, interestingly enough, you and I are on the same page when it comes to Trey young Trey's mm-hmm. stat line never has to read like 40 and three, meaning like 40 points, three assists. I don't ever want to see that again. What I want to see is exactly what we saw last night and really not just Trey, but also just that combined backcourt. When you're talking about a combined 41 points and seven rebounds and seven assists and a couple of steals. So that's what we're talking about. But let's give Trey his credit because we know tonight we're going to hear from the coaches to see who they selected as a reserve. Here's my thought. Want to get yours. My thought is, yeah. There's every reason to think that you could hear Trey Young's name because Trey's been coming on really strong these last couple of weeks with a full complement of a skill set that he's displaying, right? And right. I feel like if so, for some reason he doesn't make it tonight, somebody might go down for injury. I still expect to see him in Utah in a couple of weeks. That's just me. But what do you think about what he's displayed these last few weeks, even if we've seen him sit out a, a game here and a game there as far as maybe the coaches selecting him for the reserve team? I, to be honest, which is being that he made it last year, I think that there's going to be 
the benefit of the doubt, right? Yeah. And, and especially since he's come on as of late, you know, from a shooting standpoint, because we know that he's been struggling. And I think that, yeah. and, and I wouldn't be surprised that the he comes up in conversation, Dejounte Murray as well, because he's That's what, mm -hmm. killing it lately. He's yes. shooting I'm from I'm shooting from three and just being able to be that guy when, when um, Trey's not in the game, and and, and also being able to um, distribute when Trey is on the floor as well. So. Right. I think, but yeah, I, I do think Trey gets the benefit of the doubt and they, they call his name. Mm -hmm. And I also add that I won't be surprised if DeJounte Murray names come, comes up as well, because when you think about what he's been doing as of late, when Trey has been sitting out in those games, mm -hmm. dude has just been absolutely balling. Yeah, I hope so too. And I was going to mention him as well as my part two, because I agree with you. I hope that he gets a nod because he shouldn't be, he, he really shouldn't get a knock on him for what you maybe saw for the first, say, I'll say even like 30 to 35 games, because right. this is a guy coming into a system and coming into a backcourt where he's trying to find his way. But once he actually started finding his way and maybe was given kind of the keys to the city, mm -hmm. dude has lit it up. He's lit yeah. it up. So I hope that the, the coaches see that the DeJounte that was brought here to do just that is now showing himself to be that person. And so I hope the coaches just give it to him outright with the reserve option but if not and someone goes down to injury i definitely hope he's the first person that gets a call to say hey you want to join us in utah now speaking of getting a first call or a first look well you guys already kind of know where that is that's atl day ones but if it's a second call second look second check-in that would be locked on sports today because those guys always have the biggest reactions to any of the stories that are big across the entire country. You think that they weren't watching that drubbing last night? You know they were. So love to hear their uh, reaction to that as well. And also Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts are starting to talk about the fact that they know that this Super Bowl is something special with two African-American quarterbacks going against one another for the first time in the history of the Super Bowl. You want reaction from what Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts have to say? Check out Locked On Sports today. You can check them out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Just don't forget, after you listen to ATL Day Ones and you know for sure that you have to check us out all the way through For the Culture, check them out for Take of the Day and you will not be disappointed on what those guys have to bring on Locked On Sports today. Locked On Sports today. Check it out right now. Locked On Sports Atlanta family. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are on our way to 6,000 subscribers. We're going to get there without you, with you or without you. So make it a, a, a sound decision today, Thursday. Don't be thirsty. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Go ahead and do it. You know you want to. You know you're feeling left out right now because about over 5,000 people have already done it. So we're on the way to six. Be a part, get in the numbers, be one in the numbers. Come in today. This is my benediction to you. You know, make a decision, make a decision that's going to change your life right here. But see, this is for the culture. Um, it is the um, the intersection between sports, entertainment, and culture, and sometimes whatever the hell we want to talk about, because that's just how we get down on the show. Today is no different. T, how about this? Yes. You know, the Arena Football League, you know, it's, it's something that it was a league that, Gave a lot of people uh, opportunities to continue their careers after college, including myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, but unfortunately, it went bankrupt in 2019. However, the Arena Football League announced on yesterday, T, mm -hmm. that they will be returning in 2024. Yeah. And the F1 Sports and the Entertainment Investment Group, T, they're going to take over. And guess what? On top of that, not only this is a good opportunity for, for guys to continue their careers, mm -hmm. how about this? A Mr. Lee A. Hutton III will be yeah. the new commissioner. Why is that significant, Jarvis? It's the fact that he's a brother. And he's going to, this is the commissioner, first African American commissioner in the United States of a league, of a, a, a sports league. So mm -hmm. this is kudos to him for uh, getting the nod and also kudos for F1 Sports Entertainment for bringing back a league. That I think should have stuck stuck, stuck around to. Yeah, I, I'm excited about this because the more opportunities individuals get to display their talents, maybe get their skill set to a point where it gets them to, to the next level that they desire to be on. I think it's all good. And hey, anytime uh, an entire, or as my mom would say, a whole other league is put in place <laughs> with an African-American man at the helm that can give David Tepper a real life lesson on what uh -oh. it means to end 
the good old boys network. Yep. I'm going to come for him until I don't come for him. Do but it. yeah, until he, <laughs> and so he, he clearly needs an example, like yeah. a real life example of what it looks like to break down barriers and kick down the door of the good old boys network. So the AFL, they actually understand the assignment. And that is why they put Mr. Hutton the third in place, excited for him, but also just excited about arena football coming back because I know that it was a big opportunity for you and i know a lot of guys who've gone that way and even guys who ended up in the nfl who are excited that the arena football league is coming back Kurt so Warner, i think it's the yeah, biggest exactly, face of that. he's the right. face of that right the, exactly <laughs> so you you love to the just the opportunity for individuals to shine and show that hey i can play on that next level if i'm given an opportunity to just develop my skills maybe one or two more seasons in sort of this quote unquote developmental league, if you will. And mm -hmm. let's just be honest. If it's a good product, like it was for many years and it comes yes. back, who's going to say no to more football, not ATL day ones. <laughs> not at all. And we talk about a family atmosphere yes. and like how the players have a lot of leniency to get involved with the crowd, you know, mm -hmm. touchdown celebrations and a lot of scoring. It seems yeah. like the NFL is starting to look like the arena football league. And, <laughs> and don't, and don't ask me if, they haven't taken some some uh some pointers from them. They have. Mm -hmm. I go ahead and answer it for you. But yeah, T, I, I think this is nothing but a good thing for those guys. And I think when you think when you look at the situation and what it could mean for some guys to get extra opportunities, because mm -hmm. that's what I'm all about. Yes, you know, yes. I, I get excited about HBCU players being down there at the Senior Bowl. I get. I'm going to get excited about guys getting the opportunity to continue to play the game that they love. Yeah. So you know, hey. Yeah, if, you, if you're interested in that, if you're intrigued by the arena football out, be on the lookout for it in 2024. It's going down. I actually wouldn't mind working with y'all. You know, I'm up for calling the game. You know, yeah. Hope. I'm Shoot there. your shot. Yeah, no doubt. You're like, yeah, Mr. Sutton, uh, you know, you can hit your ball up, hit my line, man. You know, I got, you know, I got a little information for you. You know, we can, we can exchange phone numbers and, and have a good time. But anyway. We want to thank you guys for rocking with us and making ATL Day 1s your first listen of the day. And remember, Locked On Sports Today, make that your second listen because they have all the news in the top of the day. And I also have Take Other Day. Like just like we have for the culture, they have Take Other Day. And we and it's all and it's always touching on the big stories yes. of the day. So make sure you guys check them out. And also Make sure you guys come back tomorrow because we got some more good stuff coming up for y'all. It's on a good Friday, so make sure you all come back tomorrow. And last but not least, I always ask you guys this. If you don't do anything else, make sure you share love, show love, and most importantly, spread love. Spread love.